Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for attending our press conference today. Chase just told me that we have 332 media outlets from across the country who are watching this via live stream. And that doesn't include the folks that are picking us up on Facebook and Twitter. So we're really quite excited about that and looking forward to sharing some great news uh, about the Frontier League. Um, with me today, we have Jeff Catula, who many of you who are local know. Jeff is the president of the Washington County Chamber of Commerce, as well as the tourism and promotion, the tourism promotion agency. Jeff is like the top dog here in Washpaw, and we're really, really excited for all the things he's done to help us at the Washington Wild Things, and we know that he's wanting to be a big part of today's announcement. And so at this point, I'm going to turn the microphone over to Jeff Catula. Good morning, everyone, and we are excited about today's announcement. You know, in Washington County, we like to say that the American spirit lives here. And that spirit and that energy is not just found in our industries, in our business community. It's not just found in everything that we do here to make this county special, but it's also found in our people. And that's very important to us here in Washington County, that not only we are working with our indigenous folks here to make sure that they have everything they need to have a great quality of life, but also in attracting people to Washington County through work and through our efforts to attract tourism. You know, tourism in Washington County is a $700 million a year business. It's one of the largest industries in our county, and Washington County is second after Allegheny County in terms of tourism spend within our region. It's important to us. It employs 6,000 people. It attracts people to Washington County, not only to see the beauty of our county, but also to consider living here, to work here, and to play here. And playing here is also very important to us, and that's why we are so supportive of the Washington Wild Things in the Frontier League. They've been important to us. They've helped to attract people here. They've helped improve our quality of life and to make our county a better place to live because they are a professional sports team headed by a professional league, and that's something we welcome and encourage. And we're also encouraged today with a new announcement from the Frontier League Commissioner, Bill Lee. Bill, I, th I think without further ado, let's have you make the big announcement. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff, very much. I appreciate it. Um, we are very, very honored to be here today. This is a, it's a great day for the Frontier League um, and its members. And uh, I, there's quite a few people that I want to thank before we get going. Jeff, you and the uh, Washington County Tourism the, the, and, and, and the Chamber of Commerce, thank you so much for everything you've thank done and you. putting this together. It's a wonderful thing. We want to thank the staff here at the Hilton Garden Inn. And it has just been a wonderful two days here. Uh, thank you for everything you've done. Uh, it, it's a, you've done a, su a superb job. The Washington Wild Things. Uh, I want to thank Stu and Franny Williams. Thank you so much for hosting us last night at your beautiful home. Uh, had a great dinner. Thank you for everything that you've done. Uh, Chris Blaine, who headed up the, the, just putting this thing together today for everybody. Um, a wonderful, wonderful job, Chris. Thank you for everything you've done. All the staff members from uh, Tony Basili, Steve Zavacki, everybody with the Wild Things, their entire staff, all the staff members from the Frontier League who participated in this uh, in putting this event on today, thank you so very, very much from the bottom of our hearts. We want to first introduce a few people here that, um, that are visiting us, that are coming to join us, and I will talk about this in just a second. But from our guests from the Can-Am League today, first off, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Kevin Wynn, their executive uh, director, whose father is uh, terribly, terribly ill and um, may not make it. So uh, we just want to say our best to Kevin and wish him the very best. From, uh, from the Can-Am League, from New Jersey and Sussex County, we have with us the chairman of the board of the Can-Am League, Mr. Al Dorso. <clears throat> also from uh, the New Jersey Club is Greg Lockard. From the Rockland 
Club is Sean Riley and his staff. And representing Quebec and Trois-Rivières is Mr. Michel Laplante. Now I'm going to try something. I'm going to try something, so be patient with me. Bonjour et bienvenue à la Frontier League à nos amis de, du Québec. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. That's as far as I go in French. Anything else is English with a French accent. Very good. Now, from the Frontier League side of things, um, the man that everybody knows that puts everything together that makes the Frontier League tick, Sandra, back here right now, Steve Tassler, the Deputy Commissioner. <laughs> from Evansville, Mr. John Stanley. Two of our owners from Florence, Kentucky, we have Mr. Dave Del Bello and Mr. Brian Bortz. Uh, from Gateway is Rich Sojay. From Lake Erie is Tom Kramig. From Schaumburg is Brian Leiter. And from Windy City, Bike for Shaves. Um, we were hoping to have with us, I know we have one guy here, I'm going to, I'm going to mention here in a sec. We were hoping to have with us a player from, from uh, the Schaumburg Boomers, Dylan Jones. I don't think I, there he is. Hey, Dylan, how are you? Good to see you. Welcome. Uh, if you guys want to talk to him about what it's going to be like to play in this league after, we've, after our announcement today. Uh, also, Scott, did Scott Dunn make it? No, I don't see Scott. Okay. A, a Hall of Famer in the Frontier League. Pitched some for the Washington Wild things. He's on the boards up there. Please, uh, please check those boards out. That's the Frontier League Hall of Fame over the years, and, and uh, please check those boards out. But we do have one here with us that's uh, from the Washington Wild Things that was the hit king. Most hits we ever had, probably played more games than anybody else, probably most, more at bats than anybody else. Uh, Chris Seidick. Chris, Hall of Famer. Welcome. Thank you so much. And now this is what we're here for. The... It's absolutely an honor for me and a pleasure for me after 26 years in this business to be able to say this, that it's a pleasure and an honor that the Frontier League and the Can-Am League are merging to join forces and play in 2020 in the Frontier League. It's a great honor. This vision started about two years ago and we've had meetings ever since and we've been getting together at different times. We played an all-star game last summer in Rockland and that's when things really heated up. But for those of us that have been in this business a long time, to see where this thing can go, we are so excited for the future. Bringing the 14 teams from basically the Atlantic Ocean to the Mississippi River. We want to, we want to make sure that this thing can grow and watch our industry grow with it. We are very excited at the potential that we can have in marketing and expansion, um, the numbers of players that are going to keep moving on. We are so excited that um, all of our fans, everyone's fans, are going to get to see this. We have more teams coming into each, each ballpark from now on. It is a, it is a move for growth and it's, and, it's, and it's a strength for all of us. And we have had a great time getting to know each other personally. I think the chemistry with everyone that's going to be a part of this has just been great to watch. Um, the personalities are melding together. It's going to take time for everybody to get together, but it is going to be uh, a great time doing it. So I am so pleased that this is happening, that the, the value that we can bring to each other and the value that we can bring to our fans. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a nice round of applause for all the work that everyone has done bringing this thing together. There were members of your entire league, members of our entire league, that all had a part in this. But once again, thank you for everyone that's worked so hard and so diligently. Now I'm going to introduce uh, the Frontier League president, who's been the president since 2003, Mr. Rich Sojay. Brevity is a virtue, uh, so I'm going to try to keep it. You, 
addressed many of the things I was uh, going to address. But, but uh, thank you, press, for uh, all the coverage. 322 uh, outlets. That's that's wonderful. Uh, during the process of going through of this uh, for the last two years, it's really been heartening to really see how there's been a real spirit of uh, cooperation between everybody. Uh, it's just, uh, it, you hit on it very well, Bill, and the fact that everyone has, has really pulled their side of it and uh, how there's been compromises and different things we've had to do. And this is speaking strictly from the standpoint of the of uh, how to make this happen in the future. Uh, the relationships that, that have, uh, have developed have been outstanding, not only for our members, but I think these relationships uh, with our fans is even going to be, you know, fed back into the, 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 each one of our organizations. The opportunities Bill was talking about is there sort of a regeneration of all of us, or both sides. Uh, we've sort of looked for more things to do in different ways. Uh, and uh, referring to how we can expand now and the, the opportunities that we will have, I think is really going to, to really uh, put us in a different position, especially from the marketing standpoint. So, um, but a lot of the, the, the owners in the, the, of these teams are uh, business people <clears throat> and they have other interests, but the one thing that every business person looks for is when you deal with other people, and other businesses over a period of time, you want to get that feeling that, of trust, that you can trust your fellow members. And in this case, I, I have a very good feeling about where we're going. Uh, I think strong ownership for not only for financially, but there's a real, you can just feel it, the enthusiasm, a sense of urgency to get things done and not to, you know, sit back and wait for it to happen. There's, there's a real feeling here between the, the people that we've dealt with and it, um, with the Can-Am League and whatnot. So I, I'm really looking forward to what we're going to be able to accomplish in the future. So um, that's pretty much what I feel the other members would probably feel about where we're going to be going with uh, the Frontier League. All right. Thank you. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. Al Dorso, the chairman of the board of the Can-Am League. Al? How are you? I'm going to keep this very short and sweet. We're very excited to be a part of the Frontier League, and I speak for all the members of the Can-Am League. Um, it, it, it started two years ago, as they said. Um, it's been a vision, I think, of the Can-Am League uh, to be a part of something bigger and to expand in the Northeast. And the way to do that, we're 14 teams strong. We're the biggest, the best, and the brightest league, independent league in the country right now. And everyone in every market should know that. And in two years, we'll be a 20-team league. And, uh, and that's our vision, and I think that's the frontier vision. And uh, I want to thank everybody for putting it together. Uh, I'm really appreciative of the hard work that, that Bill has done uh, and, and the team on our side. Um, and thank you very much. All right, now if I can have Al, Michelle, Sean, Greg, come on up here. Steve? <laughs> yeah. Come on up, guys. We got a little swag for him. All right. There you go, guys. Thanks, Wait a minute, this is a girl's room. That's right. <laughs> you got the backside. That's right. <laughs> sure. Let me get out. Oh, Bill, get in. Come on, Bill. Yeah. 
Bill doesn't, doesn't have one. one. He, he no, I'm good. I do have one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're kind of hang around here. We're going to take some. It'd be, hang around in here. Um, and now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to take questions from uh, from the media and from the audience here. Um, we have all of the owners are right here. Everybody, whoever you may want to have a, a question for or directed at, please uh, let us know what you'd like to do. And everybody will be available afterwards, too, for individual uh, other interviews if you need it. Okay, so let's open it up for questions. Yeah, we have one on social media if you want to take it. Uh, it's why is Ottawa not included in the new league? Well, Ottawa, uh, when we started this, uh, Ottawa was, was in the conversations and unfortunately uh, when we got going and uh, there was not a valid lease for Ottawa. So, uh, but we have been having wonderful talks with the city and uh, Ottawa is uh, one of the teams that, uh, or one of the cities that we hope and, and plan on having in the Frontier League in 2021. The age limit. Uh, you wanna? Oh. Bill, there's differences between the Can-Am and the Frontier League, specifically salary cap, age limit, or, or, or uh, any of those changing with the Frontier League? Yes, we're working on some of that right now. And uh, uh, it's going to be going through these things, but it's all coming under the Frontier League banner. But we will be working on some of these things and, um, and, and compiling these rules, uh, age limits, those kind of things, working together to, uh, to blend everything that they did and some of the things that we did. And, and, uh, but that's going to be coming out shortly. Bill, I have two questions. I, um, River City, Normal, Traverse City, they in the same category as Ottawa? Uh, not right now. Not right now. They've all got teams in, uh, in Collegewood Bat League, so okay. uh, uh, they have somebody in their facilities. Okay. Uh, the other question, uh, schedule format. Uh, I know I, I saw a note that the schedule would be coming out, but can you give us an over, overview of, of uh, what kind of format you're going to be using? For well, basically division? everyone will play everyone at some point. And uh, all the teams will be hosting, I think it's 11 teams, Steve? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so that's what it'll be, yeah. Yeah, we have another one on social media. Um, how hard was it to write the schedule spanning from Quebec to St. Louis? You know, uh, I watched the scheduling committee work. And uh, it's, it's very difficult to do a 14-team schedule, but it's even more difficult when you have to include all the travel that's there. Uh, but I think our scheduling committee, uh, led by Steve Tassler, uh, Tom Cranvig, Mike Vershave, Steve Gomrick, Tony Basile, um, and uh, who was your last one on there? Dennis Pelfrey. We're all members of this uh, committee. And they worked very, very hard for several weeks to try and do something. But they came out with a product that you folks will get to see on Monday that uh, we believe is, is very, very Fair and very, very equitable for everyone. Hey, Bill, from the player's side, how's the travel going to work? Like, what's the furthest distance between the two teams? The furthest distance would be from Quebec City to uh, basically Gateway, I would think. Um, and uh, there will be some teams that will probably fly. And that uh, hopefully you guys as players will get a kick out of that. Right, Dylan? Uh -huh. <laughs> not a, not, I don't think you'll have a 19-hour bus ride, so we'll, we'll work on that. You've got people on the live stream asking about divisions. About divisions? Yeah, a live stream. Okay. In the Can-Am division, it's going to be called the Can-Am division. That would be the um, would be Quebec, uh, Trois-Rivières, Rockland, uh, uh, Sussex, uh, New Jersey, Washington, and Lake Erie would be under the Can-Am division. The Midwestern division will be um, the three Chicago area teams, Schaumburg, Windy City, Joliet, and then uh, Gateway, Southern Illinois, Evansville, and Florence. We have another question on social media. It's been asked a couple times. Uh, with the Sussex County Miners and the Southern Illinois Miners, uh, how, do, how should fans expect that to be played out, or what type of feedback uh, do you want those fans to know? 
Uh, those two teams are talking about how they're going to handle all that stuff, but uh, I think they'll come to a very nice agreement on that. And, In and general, the Sussex County miners are going to are going to beat up on the Southern <laughs> Illinois miners, just, you know, for a matter of record. <laughs> Okay, on live stream we got we will play 96 games again, uh, beginning May the 16th, I believe it is. And May what? Thursday, May 14th. Thursday, May 14th, and ending on uh, the Sunday of Labor Day weekend. 96 games. We have a question on social media as well. Is the can the Can Am League as a name that is no longer in existence, and is the operation, I, I, per you announced, that it's going to be the Frontier League moving forward? I'm sorry. Repeat. The, the Can Am League name is no longer in existence in terms of operation as a league. That there, everyone is playing under the Frontier League umbrella. Yeah, we, we will, the Can Am League will not be playing baseball this year, and we are under the Frontier League umbrella. We will just be a division, Can Am division, of the Frontier League. <laughs> they want to know who the commissioner of the league is going to be. Okay. We're I guess, I, I guess this is my farewell, later. folks. <laughs> <laughs> as of right now, until well, we have a league meeting coming up in about a month. As of right now, I'm still the commissioner, and uh, Steve will be the deputy commissioner. The league office will remain uh, over in the, in the uh, St. Louis area, in Soja, Illinois, uh, where it has been since uh, uh, we moved there in 2003. And so. here in the audience. Mr. Lee. Mr. DeFabio, yes, sir. <laughs> so when the Canadian teams come to our ballpark, the Wild Things, we play two national anthems, right? Yes, yes sir, you will. Okay. Now, it's been a while since I've heard O Canada, and I've known you since 2002, and these people don't know, but I know you like to sing. <laughs> How about a couple of little notes to remind us? Come on, Bill, you can do it. We'll really? Sing with him. Come on. Yeah. O Canada. <laughs> That's good. Go ahead. Go. Say it in French. Sing it in French. <laughs> there we go. You see, we'll, we'll, we'll you know, yeah. We, tonight, we, the, the floor show starts at eight. <laughs> More questions, please. We have a couple questions asking about. Uh, you said it kind of indirectly, but an announcement of the schedule. Uh, what do you guys want to make? When, when can fans expect that? Planning on planning on uh, next Monday, the twenty-first, for the schedule to come out. Question about the international teams? What's yeah, the question? The they will not. That was one of the questions submitted in. I'm sorry? I didn't, I the didn't. international teams are, are not going to be on the schedule this year, Cuba and oh. Japan. Oh, 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 yeah. Right. Okay, okay. We have a question as well regarding uh, playoff format. What, what does the postseason play look like? We haven't decided that yet, but it will probably be the top two teams in each division, and uh, then there'll be a, uh, in five game sets. Uh, probably two, three sets like uh, we did before, and uh, probably a, a five-game series of two, three in the championship series. We have a question from Luke from the Quebec Chronicle Telegraph asking uh, the balance of the schedule. Is it, should they expect it to be even, or will it ha be offset because of the seven teams per division? That would be offset, I would think. Okay. It's not going to be equal play yeah, with everybody. I've got on that cheese cut breakdown. Oh. Where is it? Yeah, two series in the yeah. division. Is this this one? one. The 12-6-3 one? Yes. Okay. That's the answer. All right. <laughs> Here's the answer. The hardest part was uh, to set the clubs in their pairings of 12 games, 6 games, or 3 games uh, against each other. And once that puzzle was solved, the actual slidings of the games went relatively simple. Uh, we tried three different formats before finding one that, that flowed adequately and went through 16 drafts to get a, a final schedule. Uh, okay, 12 games against five teams, that one, yeah. You're playing 12 games against five clubs, six games against four additional clubs, uh, three games against the remaining three clubs. Games are scheduled to maximize geographic rivals while still allowing each team to play each other club. Teams will visit and host 11 of the 13 
teams in 2020. On social media as well regarding uh, all-star game potentials is that something in the plans for 2020 there there are some uh, talks going on right now but uh, we don't we're not at uh, liberty to divulge where the 2020 all-star game may be question more I guess more so for the can am uh, guys uh, will teams still be available to have the Cuban players on the roster like I guess last year in the can am league you know, that's a question that we haven't crossed yet. Um, I guess it's possible. It, it, you know, we don't have a problem with it if, if when we haven't talked about it with, with the commissioner, obviously. But it's a good question. We did have, we did have in the Frontier League this year one player was a Cuban player who had defected and had the proper paperwork to get his work visa. So, as long, yeah, we do have international ball players. We do have. We probably have 30 different players from foreign countries this year on valid work visas, but they have to have the P1 visa for professional sports. Can everybody hear that? Or do we need to repeat? Steve, why don't you come Steve, up? Steve, why don't you come, come up? up here? And come, please come up, Steve. Go ahead and Steve, Steve handles all the visa. Steve handles all the visa work for the league anyway. So this is a, he's the perfect guy to answer this question. Uh, about the Cuban ball players, we did have actually one Cuban ball player in the Frontier League this year who defected and had the proper paperwork to get a U.S. work permit. We do have international players. We probably had 30 different ball players amongst our teams in 2019. Uh, they're all on valid P1 work visas, the athlete of exceptional ability. That program will continue in 2020 and going forward. So yes, as long as they meet the background checks and have the correct playing opportunity, they can get the work visas and play in the Frontier League. There you have it. <laughs> Where did he go? He disappeared again. Yeah, he disappeared. That's it. <laughs> we have a question from Thomas John on the live stream. Do you think travel in the Canada will affect the way teams sign foreign Latin players? No. no. That, that hasn't that affected the Can-Am League at all, and it, it won't affect the visas work. It, it, it right. never has been a problem at the border. Is that it? Well, we got one more from. Yes, Mr. DeFabio. It's Bill, like you, okay? <laughs> I'm thinking of all these teams, right? Is there going to be the word? I hate to use the word. It's like a swear word. Parity, because the talent pool. You know, there's going to be some good players, maybe average players. Should we worry about parity? No, it's going to be with fine. all the talent and all the teams. No, Looking I think I think, it'll be, I think the league will the league will pan out just like it always does. You know, we've always had good parity within the league, and uh, it'll it'll keep playing like that. I'm sure. You know, just last night I, I want to say that we were talking about um, about how difficult it's going to be. The Sussex County Miners were the 2018 league champions, my Miners, and the New Jersey Jackals were the 2019 champions <laughs> in a very small league, 16 six team league. Um, and they said, you know, it's going to be much more difficult in a 14-team league to be the league champion. And I agree 100% it's going to be harder for the rest of the teams to win you know, <laughs> against my two teams. I just want to make that clear. <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. <laughs> Remind them about the All-Star game. What's that? Remind them about the All-Star game. Who won that? Oh, yeah. Well, 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 well the All-Star So to make this whole thing work, I just want you to know that we let – the Frontier League win the All-Star game this year because they were a little antsy about, you know, the merger. You know? Yeah, you know, they, they said after, one of their players said to me afterwards, they said, wow, your guys treated that like it was the World Series. I said it was. <laughs> Bill, we have a question on the live, live stream from Stadium, Mark from uh, Stadium Journey. What will you tell prospective expansion owners about joining the Frontier League compared to a summer wooden bat league in the future? Well, first off, it's, it's professional baseball that you're getting. Uh, and you'll play a lot more games with professional baseball. The caliber of play will be high. And uh, you'll see some guys continue to move on and, and, and reach the major leagues. You know, it was, it's pretty cool. It's just watching all the, the playoffs this, the, since the playoffs started a couple of weeks ago in Major League Baseball. And I think at the start, there was about 12 people that were involved in those 
teams that were getting into the playoffs. I mean, from a major league general manager with Oakland to uh, I think we have five or six major league coaches up there. I know Milwaukee has their the hitting coach, the pitching coach are all frontier league guys. There was there were several um, a couple of umpires that were, came out of the Can-Am and the frontier. Um, there's I think five or six players still there. Uh, you know that were playing in the in this. So it's a lot of fun to uh, to watch and see some of these guys. We had a broadcaster. Um, and it's it's just a lot of fun to watch and see how these guys and how they're moving. So um, there's still whether whether you're watching Frontier League, whether you're watching affiliated minor league baseball, whether you're watching college baseball, people are going to move on and people are going to are uh, are going to advance. Another question from Luke from the Quebec Chronicle Telegraph. Other than Ottawa, what markets are you looking at? in 2021 and beyond? Well, right now we have some conversations going on, but uh, and we have some targets that, but we are basically looking at cities anywhere from um, basically the east coast of the United States up into the provinces of Ontario and Quebec, and then all the way over into the Midwest, uh, past the Mississippi River, and uh, and even, even down a little more to the south. So uh, everything's fair game at this point. Uh, but there's a lot of cities that we've targeted and a lot of cities that we're going to be visiting uh, as, the, as time goes on here. If there's no more questions. If not, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to invite all of you to have lunch with us. And once again, Jeff, you're going to close us out? Yeah, we'll close out. That's Thank you very much. Commissioner Lee, everyone, please join me in a round of applause. This is an important day for baseball. It's an important day for the Frontier League and Commissioner Lee. We certainly appreciate you selecting Washington County to host this important day for us and for you, for, you so with much. your merger. And I would like also to point out, and before you leave, that I like I cannot let you leave without pointing out the tremendous community impact and investment not only of the Frontier League, but of our host team today here in Washington County, the Washington Wild Things with Stu and Fran Williams. Thank you so much for all you do. We appreciate your continued investment in the county and also your continued support and being a true corporate citizen. Please join me for a round of applause for them. And in Washington County, just like the Frontier League and its partnerships, we pride ourselves in working together. And I'd like to take a few moments and recognize some of our partners here today. We have Representative Tim O'Neill, our representative in the State House. Tim, thank you for being with us and for your support. We have Ms. Adair from Senator Barlotta's office. Thank you for being with us as well. We have our North Franklin supervisors. Thank you for being with us, Bob. We appreciate that as well. Join me for a round of applause. We have the mayor of the city of Washington, Scott Putnam. Thank you for being with us today, Mayor. From the Tourism Promotion Agency, we have our Chairman Mark Alderisi and Dennis Dutton. Thank you, gentlemen, for being with us and for all your support. And also to my staff of the Washington Chamber of Commerce and Tourism, especially to Chase McLean for all your help in setting this up today, and everyone else. We certainly appreciate your hard work to make this community the best that it can be. Again, our press packets will be available to those who didn't get them. And uh, please, please join us for lunch. Thank you so much for being with us today and look forward to seeing you at the ballpark. Take care. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. My pleasure, my pleasure. Let me know. I work for hot dogs up here. Yeah, I know. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you.